Welcome to Nationwide. I'm Amina Saidu. President Bola Tinubu has been appointed as the African Union Champion for Human Resources on Health and Community Health Delivery, partnership against the backdrop of his ambitious, innovative and people-focused efforts in the sector. The appointment is in recognition of Tinubu's commitment to train 120,000 frontline health workers nationwide within 16 months and to double the number of primary health facilities in communities across all local government areas of the Federation from 8,800 to over 17,000 in the next three years. The Commission of the African Union Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Africa CDC, in a letter to Nigeria's Ministry of Foreign Affairs said President Tinubu was appointed on the recommendation of the Committee of Heads of State and Government of Africa CDC under the leadership of His Excellency President Azali Asomani, President of the Union of Comoros and Chairperson of the African Union. In his new role, the Commission subsequently invited President Tinubu to address the Ministerial Executive Leadership Program under the theme, Impactful Leadership in Health, a whole government approach slated for Saturday, February 17, 2024, at the Africa CDC headquarters in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, on the margins of the 37th Ordinary Session of the Assembly of AU Heads of State and Government. President Bola Tinubu has approved the immediate upgrade of key health infrastructure and equipment across all six geopolitical zones in line with his administration's vision over, of overhauling the health and social welfare sector for enhanced service delivery to all Nigerians. To advance this landmark effort, the Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, in collaboration with the Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority, will carry out a comprehensive upgrading of cancer treatment infrastructure and other critical developments in six tertiary hospitals across several geopolitical zones. The following teaching hospitals across geopolitical zones have been marked for the establishment of oncology and nuclear medicine centers per facility to ensure cancer diagnosis and care is accessible across the country. University of Benin Teaching Hospital Amadubello University Teaching Hospital, University of Nigeria Unsuka Teaching Hospital, Federal Teaching Hospital Katsuna, University of Just Teaching Hospital, Lagos University Teaching Hospital. The following 10 critical healthcare service expansion projects across the fields of radiology, clinical pathology, medical and radiation oncology, and cardiac catheterization will be carried out in 10 hospitals across all geopolitical zones. Northwest Reference Hospital, Kaduna, Radiology, Clinical Pathology, Medical and Radiation Oncology, Southeast Medical Diagnostic Center Complex, Enugu, Radiology, Clinical Pathology, Medical and Radiation Oncology, Northwest Usman Mfudu University Teaching Hospital, Sokoto, Diagnostic and Intervention Radiology, Clinical Pathology, and Cardiac Catheterization. Southwest University College Hospital Ibadan, Diagnostic and Intervention Radiology, Clinical Pathology and Cardiac Catheterization. South South University of Uyo Teaching Hospital Radiology and Clinical Pathology. Northeast Abubakar Tafa Abelio University Teaching Hospital Bochi, Radiology and Clinical Pathology. South South Federal Medical Center Asaba, Radiology and Clinical Pathology. North Central Harmony Advanced Diagnostic Center Complex Elorin, Radiology and Clinical Pathology. North Central Joss University Teaching Hospital, 
radiology and clinical pathology and Northeast Federal Medical Center Nguru radiology and clinical and clinical pathology. These critical projects said to be delivered within 12 to 18 months will improve screening and diagnostics for communicable and non-communicable diseases, reduce mortality rates and improve outcomes for non-communicable diseases, create considerable employment opportunities for clinical, administrative and managerial personnel across Nigeria's six geopolitical zones. The saying, there are no strangers, just friends we have not met, formed the basis of discussion between the House of Representatives Committee on Ireland Parliamentary Friendship Group and the delegation of the Irish Embassy in Abuja. National Assembly Correspondent Joshua Ogunjiji reports on the interface. The interface marks the maiden engagement of House Committee on Highland Parliamentary Friendship Group with the Embassy of Highland since its inauguration. The delegation said Ireland and Nigeria share common historical background cohabitation and diplomatic ties as far back as the pre-colonial era. Our foreign affairs minister will be visiting uh, Nigeria for St. Patrick's Day for the very first time in Nigerian or Irish history. We are currently building our largest ever embassy on the continent of Africa right here in Abuja. Our largest ever investment it was uh, Nigeria, of course, was home to our first embassy on the continent of Africa. I request Your Excellency to use your good office to facilitate some academic scholarships for Nigerians, students who wish to study in Ireland, and that such scholarships should pass through the Nigeria Irish Parliamentary Friendship Committee, and special events such as the visit of top Irish government officials for support to Nigeria, so that we can be part of the program and also show support. Other areas of interest did not exclude food security technical partnership, innovation and tourism. From the National Assembly, Joshua Okuchite, NT News. The Ministry of Communications, Innovation and Digital Economy is working with the World Bank to assess ways of accelerating investments in Nigeria's telecommunications infrastructure so as to achieve broadband availability and accessibility for all. Chidiman Dubusu tells us more. For any Nigerian in any locality to enjoy quality internet services presently considered as the backbone of micro, small and medium enterprises, there must be adequate telecommunication infrastructure, especially the fiber optics cable. In Nigeria's case, 120,000 kilometers of fiber optics have to be laid across the country. Currently, only about 35,000 kilometers have been covered for a country that is seeking to provide low-cost internet services and achieve universal access to digital technology. So, the government has set a target to cover the gap in two years and is discussing increased funding through loan guarantee with the private sector and development partners. What is required is about two, two to three billion dollars uh, fund that, that needs to make that happen and that entire money is not just for the cable itself it's also ensuring that we can start to reduce the non-consumption in internet across the country we're discussing with the government how can the world bank provide technical assistance and if needed perhaps some financing for that goal nigeria has a very impressive digital ecosystem you guys could be the hub for exporting digital services to all of west africa if the government is supporting the build out of infrastructure that's the right direction to to go when this is achieved all communities particularly the underserved areas will have connectivity to internet services which will foster economic growth in abuja tim de dubisi nta news operatives of the fct police command have apprehended dairo adamo one of the two suspected kidnappers on the run whom the fct minister nesom wiki put a 20 million naira bounty on commissioner of police fct benedict with presented the suspect and some of his rescued victims exclusively to nt news onotu yakubu reports dairo adamo was tracked down to their camp in the forests along abuja south where some victims were still being held captive and awaiting ransom from their family members. His arrest also led to the unveiling of another suspect who contracted his syndicate to kidnap and kill the village head of Katie some weeks ago. <laughs> 
who entered the estate three times to kidnap and the Ruga also, in all, we made between 8 to 13 million euros. Before Dahiru Adamu was arrested, the anti-kidnapping squad engaged him and other members of his gang in a shootout to rescue these victims in their custody. The kidnapped us at Garke, where we are rearing cattle. We spent 15 days and they demanded for 10 million naira ransom. It cannot still be business as usual. Like I said, after the Mr. Levsi said, you can see what we have done. We are continuing without resting. So I want to tell and ask and request and beg every medical institution, please, if anybody comes with uh, bullet wound. I didn't say you shouldn't treat the person, but contact us. Treat the person, but contact us so that we confirm if he's among the people that escaped from the bush with a bullet wound. Dahiru Adamu's arrest brings to aid the total members of his kidnapping syndicate in police custody so far. Onotu Yakobo, NTA News. Similarly, Sokoto State Police Command has arrested 15 persons in connection with banditry, kidnapping and cattle rustling. The State Commissioner of Police Ali Hayatu Kagama paraded the suspects before newsmen at the command headquarters Sokoto. al Hatu Abdullahi reports. Efforts by Sokoto State Police Command to rid the state of crimes is yielding fruitful results. On 14th February 2024, the police foiled kidnapping attempt at Gegane village of Gadabawa local government and after a gun duel, the police neutralized one of the suspected bandits and recovered a general purpose machine gun with six live ammunition. Similarly, the police arrested nine suspected kidnappers in possession of three AK-47 rifles with 90 rounds of ammunition who were heading to Tambol town on kidnapping mission. Four persons from Bailio village of Benji local government were also arrested on 10th February 2024 for allegedly invading Gedawa village of Wamako local government and kidnapped three innocent people and collected 30 million naira as ransom. The Sakuto State Police Commissioner Ali Hayatu Kaigama paraded Mohamed Modi and Batua Dogari of Bukwim local government of Zamfara State allegedly sent to Sakoto to receive delivery of 790 rounds of 7.62 millimeter AK-47 live ammunition which was also recovered along Gaidao Ilela Road in Sakoto State. He assured the public of Nigeria's police commitment to reduce criminality in all its ramifications, hence the need for everyone to support the security agencies. In Sakoto, Dalhatu Abdullahi, NTA News. More than 17, more than 718 million naira worth of grains have been collected as a cut in the last farming season and will be shared among the needy and vulnerable members of Duzi Emirate. This was disclosed during the flag off of this year's zakat distribution by the Emir of Duzi Hamim Nuhusanusi in Mega local government area. Sheikh Mohammed Dati reports. The grains collected as zakat amounts to more than 700 million naira, excluding animals and cash, which was gathered by the Duse Emirate Zakat Collection and Distribution Committee under the supervision of Emir Abduse Hamim Nuhum Hamar Senusi. The gesture targets more than 29,000 needy and vulnerable people of the Emirate. The Emir, while flagging up the Zakat distribution in Miga district, says despite shortage of farm produce experience this year, the quantity of food collected as zakat is commendable. He admonished people of the Emirate to give zakat as ordained by Allah to earn his mercies and multiple blessings. To give out part of what the, the little they have. So uh, we really commend the people of uh, this uh, community of uh, Miga district for their effort and their willingness to give out uh, charity to the less privileged. The district head of Miga, Garba Mahaman Miga, and the chairman of the local government, Adam Musariki, appreciated the concern of the Emir and thanks him for coming personally to distribute the zakat collected. Zakat is one of the pillars of Islam and is collected and distributed to deserving people in the locality where it is collected. Her point of the event was distribution 
to deserving members of the district. In Duse, Show Muhammad Detti, NTA News. Joining us live is Shehu Muhammad Detti with more details on this important Islamic religious obligation as it plays a role in fighting poverty in the society. Hello, Shehu. came on board as the MBA, he now consolidated on the issue of the election and uh, issues with um, Sheikh Muhammad. We now take a break. Nationwide continues shortly. A good farmer is a craftsman of the highest order. It is said, great farmer, great nation. No farmer, no nation. Yes, let's set the ball rolling to build that great Nigeria where good food is in abundance, affordable and easily accessible. The Renewed Hope Initiative, RHI, an initiative of the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Senator Oluremi Tinumbu, C.O.N., is aligning with the vision and aspiration of the administration of President Bola Tinumbu, GCFR, and is organizing the Every Home a Garden Competition. The competition is under the scope of agriculture of the Renewed Hope Initiative. For the competition, women are encouraged to immediately plant a garden at home such that the harvest can provide adequate food on their table and enough to give their neighbor. This competition is open to only women. She must be a first-time farmer. The garden must be in her home. And it is open to women in every state of the Federation and the FCT. Interested participants should do a 30 seconds video and a picture of the garden which indicates its location to the office of the First Lady ladies of their various states. The winner of this competition will be announced in December 2024. And the winner of the competition goes home with 20 million naira. Women, join the train. Be part of the food revolution in Nigeria. What are you waiting for? Let's get to work. This message is by the Renewed Hope Initiative, RHI, an initiative of the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Senator Oluremi Tinumbu, C.O.N. It's time for First Bank's Win Big Promo. 170 million Naira up for grabs. Open or reactivate your First Bank account. Deposit and maintain a minimum of 5,000 Naira for just 30 days. And the soft life begins. Transact up to five times on our digital channels. And guess what? You could be a lucky 100,000 Naira winner each month. But wait, there's more. Deposit and maintain 50,000 Naira each month for four months or deposit 200,000 Naira for four months and you could stand a chance to win a whooping one million Naira in the grand finale. Don't miss your chance to win big with First Bank. This promo runs till February 23rd, 2024 and is open to new and existing account holders. Terms and conditions apply. Keep transacting. Keep winning. You first. First Bank. Sporty Bet sponsors coverage of the Italian Serie A. We can file your Saturday delight, going to places from the obscure to the hinterland and cities, bringing you development stories and perspectives, connecting the people with government and stakeholders on critical issues of our national life. We are live in Abuja. It's 9 p.m. every Saturday on the network service of the NTA. We can file. You can't afford to miss it. The bear! A magnificent strike from the 19-year-old. Lovely ball. Trossard, cool as you like, majestic. Come back and it's there! Sporty Bet sponsors coverage of the English Premier League.
Welcome back. We now join Michael in Lagos for more reports. Hello, Michael. Hello, Amina. Good to see you. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawolu has announced that the much anticipated Red Line mass transit train will flag off its operations on February 29, stating that effective traffic management and transportation system are critical to achieving the Themes Plus agenda of his administration. The governor disclosed these at the Lagos State Parking Authority Stakeholders Forum held in Lagos. S.A. Wamaka reports. In 2021, under Governor Babajide Sonolu's administration, the Lagos State Parking Policy was formulated with the establishment of the Lagos State Parking Authority, LASPA. Its aim is to regulate all forms of parking by adopting innovative, adaptable and sustainable operational system and technologies to ease traffic challenges faced by Lagosians. At the Stakeholders Forum, organized by the Lagos State Parking Authority, Governor Babaji De Sonolo says he had approved the on-street parking scheme to regulate and checkmate haphazard parking in line with global best practices. Lagos has 10 times more vehicular density than any part of the, of the, of the country, has 10 times traffic issues than any part of the country. We need to be nimble, we need to be creative, we need to be able to come up with a policy that both of us will see, both the public users and government can come together and engage and have a solution. For the general manager, Lagos State Parking Authority, at DBC Adelabu, she says parking management is on the center stage in the actualization of meeting the target of traffic management of Governor Babajide Sonolu's administration. So far, we have identified over 20,000 setbacks suitable for parking across the state, and more than 13,000 are already in use while other works are going on to identify more. The theme of the occasion, which is parking in Lagos, the journey so far, assessing the social and economic impact of the sector, had the governor announced the official flag of operations of the Red Line Mass Transit train to be inaugurated by President Bola Ametinubu on February 29. In Lagos, S.A. Omamaka, NC News. Field sections of the Apapa, Ijora, Causeway and other federal roads in Lagos will receive urgent attention by the Federal Road Maintenance Agency, FEMA, as part of measures to ensure heat-free vehicular movement and boost economic activities in affected areas. Managing Director FEMA, Emeka Agnasi, gave the hint during an inspection of road rehabilitated by the agency in Lagos. Jokbo Polari Pus. Determined to sustain the gains of zero portals and Operation Connect Your Destination, the former boss, Emeka Agbasi, is in Lagos to ascertain progress of work on ongoing projects. This failed session of the Apapa Ijora Causeway is a narrative FEMA wants to change to decongest the Apapa Corridor with the rehabilitation of this road. This has been identified uh, as a major uh, failure that needs to be tackled because looking at this, we find out that one lane is virtually closed. So this needs to be tackled uh, uh, immediately. More recently, there have been dis discussions on using super pave, which is a superior performance uh, um, uh, pavement. So we're constantly looking at the materials uh, that we use, processes we use, and also the technologies that are being used to uh, construct the pavements. The Water Corporation Drive in Victoria Island was either too in a deplorable state and flood prone. But with the intervention of FEMA, road users are now enjoying each free movement with drainage constructed to finally surmount the challenge of flooding. Beneficiaries assured FEMA that the infrastructure will be protected. We are very happy and very delighted and we hope this kind of thing will continue. Because uh, without infrastructure like this, there will be no movement of goods and services. The completion of the 2.5 kilometers a Sherry North Road, which will connect Ikorodu and parts of Ogun State, is a huge relief for residents. We thank them, we appreciate them, then we still pray for them so that uh, God will help them. They are trying their best and as Oliver Twist, we still continue to want more. Other roads rehabilitated include the Agbara Road, especially the critically failed sessions around the market area. Nigeria deserves good road and FEMA says it will ensure this is achieved in year 2024. In Lagos, Joel Bukbola, NT News. That is it from here. It's now back to Amina for the continuation of the news. Join Chinenye in Enugu for more reports.
Ugu. There is no doubt that the media plays a major role in societal growth, particularly in uniting the people. It is in line with this objective that the Enugu State Government entered into a strategic partnership with the Africa's largest television network, the Nigerian Television Authority. Through that collaboration, the NTA Enugu Network Center has become equipped with an additional power source for heat free quality broadcasting. Chika Ugu reports. The Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, has over the years been championing quality programming to effectively inform, entertain, and educate the people. For a government-owned organization operating among fully commercialized competitors in a cost-intensive industry, meeting the challenges of modern-day broadcasting demands has been an uphill task for managers of NTA. It would be impossible for the government to tell the people the story of development in Enugu State without NTA. So the state government decided to help improve the quality of what you are doing at NTA. NTA Enugu Zonal Director Wadi Elubike described the state government's gesture as both gratifying and challenging. Enugu State Government, by providing the solar power to NTA, has put us on the platform of professional broadcasting, which is 24 hours, seven days a week transmission. Also, for all the members of staff, it is a call to improved service. For me, everybody has gone digital, so it will help us to compete uh, favorably with other uh, broadcasting organizations. Being the flagship of uh, the television house in the whole of the southeast, there is not supposed to be any time there is a dull moment in our transmission, and that is what they have done. It is now best for us to embrace it and know that this is the time to put on our best energy to work. The completed solar power project is a guarantee for 24 hours uninterrupted transmission of quality programs in Enugu, Chika Ugu, NTA News. Some residents of Enugu have decried the economic hardship and rising cost of commodities in the markets. Uche Namele, who visited some markets within the metropolis, reports that the general call is for the government to find a lasting solution to the poor economic situation. It is no longer news that Nigerians are facing a lot of difficulties, especially economic challenges, as many struggle to provide some of their basic needs, especially food, as inflation continues to erode household incomes. Nigerians are indeed facing hard times with the recent upward review of fuel pump price due to the removal of fuel subsidy across the Federation as well as rising exchange rates of dollar in the global markets. In any good state and in most states of the Federation, many people have resorted to corporate begging for survival due to the economic realities in the country. Market men and women are lamenting the low level of patronage. All of buying is getting low every little bit. So um, we have seen to you that it is as a, as a result of this high cost of these people coming to buy. They got a little they have, maybe they try to economize and as a manage their, their families. Some respondents have advised Nigerians to engage in businesses or jobs that will give them multiple streams of income to enable them cope with the hard times. For this country now, as I'm seeing it now, they're supposed to reduce the price of uh, fuel. But everything concerning business relying on fuel by transportation, so that is the main thing. So let government check to know what they are going to do about it. We are begging them. People are suffering. There's someone else yesterday that came to me telling me to give her money. I carried my last card to give her, but what, what will I do? I'll give her my last card, 500 naira. They, however, appealed to government at all levels to look into the plight of its citizens and bring a lasting solution to the economic crisis in Enugu, Uchenna, Namele, NTNews. And that's our beat from here. Amina is back to you in Abuja for the continuation of Nationwide.
Level warfare training for naval and joint forces is imperative to respond appropriately across the range of military operations and facilitate a more holistic approach to addressing security challenges in the nation. Former Chief of Defense Staff General Loki Urabo retired, who said this while presenting lectures for participants of Naval Warfare Course 8 in Calabar calls for synergy among armed forces for effective operations. Udwak Etim reports. Operates in the maritime domain, which are complex and transborder in nature, such as piracy, illegal bunkering, and others, require a collective security approach by the maritime forces in the sub region. This is the reason the Naval War College Nigeria has continued with its operational level warfare course to improve the capacity of armed forces comprising the Nigerian Navy, Nigerian Army, Nigerian Air Force, and foreign participants. The nuances that involved the formulation of the policy itself and issues surrounding the implementation of the defense policy. I'm hopeful that, um, you know, they will take to heart. Operational level commanders, I want you to take in everything that has gone into the lecture. Internalize all the things that you have learned and put them to use as occasion demands. Participants of Naval Warfare Course 8 were encouraged to take the training seriously to continually develop their professional ability to compete globally on military operations. In Calabar, Udwak Etam, NTN News. We now go back to uh, Duzi uh, with Shehu Mohammed for details on the Zakat issue. Okay, uh, as I was saying, uh, the issue of the card collection and distribution was conceived by late Emir of Adusi uh, Enuhu Muhammad Sanisi of blessed memory. Now, when his son came on board, he now consolidated on the legacy led by his father. Uh, the flag of that was done in MIGA local government, had uh, attendance by many uh, vulnerables, and consideration was given to women who are the most vulnerable, considering the fact that they are, some of them have lost their uh, uh, husbands and then they are left with their children to take care of. And at the same time, the EMEA made a passionate appeal to, uh, to not only give out the zakat, but come out and help the needy and vulnerable, considering the economic hardship facing uh, the nation uh, at, at, at this time. Uh, this uh, local, uh, this uh, Emirate has about seven uh, local governments with 28 the districts and each and every district uh, have to and collect and distribute uh, this uh, zakat just to bring soccer and at the same time to perform one of the religious obligation uh, as a Muslim and uh, the one that was just uh, uh, distributed was that of grains uh, money and uh, animals are also collected but will come up later as uh, the distribution continues in other districts. Thank you, Shehu. That was Shehu Muhammad Dati with uh, the Islamic religious obligation of Zakat. Ministry of Labor and Employment has commenced efforts to regulate apprenticeship system in Nigeria in line with international standards. To achieve this objective, the ministry embarked on sensitization of stakeholders at some markets in Abuja. Ekenendulu reports. There were instructional materials. Staff of the Ministry of Labor and Employment arrived at Kubo Mechanic and Furniture Market in the FCT. They are educating business owners on the need to register their workshops and apprentices and get accredited by the Department of Skills Development and Certification. The department says the move targets to end child labor while successful apprentices will be issued which trade test certificates of competence. Training curriculum must be revised periodically to conform to international best practices and technological advancements. So once you are engaging an apprentice, you make sure the apprentice is 12 years and above. And there should be a clear term of the apprenticeship, a clear remuneration and settlement. The traders are happy government is trying to formalize the sector. I understand that uh, having the certificate 
is as well like someone who has a degree certificate as well. Because I understand that with certificates, I can be employed in any ministry. I can even employ it outside this country. Even if the, the parents are able to train the, the, the children, let them provide a little stipend, like fund, for them to start up. The ministry believes with current situation of things, skills acquisition is the solution to the challenge of unemployment. In Abuja, Ekene Ndulwe, NTA News. Brain drain in Nigeria has been robbing the country of its expertise, especially in the health sector, as talents in the medical field leave the country daily for greener pastures. Helen Dunku is looking at possible ways to tackle this menace. Nigeria, nicknamed Jackma, is the exodus of middle class and highly skilled Nigerians, which has been occurring in waves since the economy of Nigeria started dwindling. The people in government will have to put on their thinking caps to try and see how they can restore some sanity. Unemployment, poor enumeration, lack of medical equipment have been identified as some factors that predispose people to travel to foreign countries for greener pastures. And not everybody actually wants to leave. There are people that want to stay, there are people that want to work here, but they just need a better working condition, that's all. To make available facilities like the kind that we see outside and also they'll try to make the kind of treatments that people go outside to receive they should try to make that kind of treatments available here the effect of brain drain in the nation cannot be ignored or swept under the carpet nigeria has lost some of its finest professionals to brain drain especially in the health sector the government have found a way to give approval for us to replace them as they leave so that has helped a little bit to reduce that uh, challenge of not having enough hands on ground to attend to the patients. In terms of uh, overhead, the government has been supporting us. Medical personnel are optimistic that the President Ahmed Tinubu's led administration will consider better remuneration and working conditions, as well as funding and equipping of hospitals to keep health workers from unwarranted exodus. In Asaba, Helen Dunku, NTA News. Management of University of Abuja has assured the public that it has come of age and will beat its chest for meeting standards that others can emulate. Briefing the media on the forthcoming 28th convocation, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Abdul Rashid Naalla, said under him the institution has cleared 800 backlogs of unwritten certificates inherited since the establishment of the university. The university enjoined harmonious industrial relationship with unions, making it impossible for interruption in its academic calendar. Entrepreneurship skills is instilled, is instilled in students to be self-reliant after graduation. And to be part of solution, creating wealth, even before they, they, they leave our campus. Many of them are businesses already. They must register with CAC before they can graduate. If you have not done that registration, you can't graduate. You can't take our certificate. Today, 2024, February, we can beat our chest and say, we have arrived. We've prepared our university to be able to give the best in education. We have a system in which sexual harassment is, is, is attacked. To introduce ways to generate revenue to complement government subvention in addition to blockage of leakages. For more updates, we now join Susan in Asaba for possible ways to curb the situation in the country. Hello, Susan. Can you tell us on the Jaqua syndrome? Good and thank you for that. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us here in Asaba. Of course, we are talking about um, the implication of Jackpot syndrome, that is medical brain drain in the health sector. And that, that is what we are talking about here in Asaba. You know, over the years, about two, three years ago, the rate and number of persons leaving Nigeria for greener pastures in other countries is becoming alarming. And 
this cuts across every sector, every field of endeavor. The health sector is not uh, an exception. So we have lost a lot of very professional young men and women in the health sector to, you know, some deficiencies in the health in the health sector. And now, um, for to cut the the shortage here in Asaba, Federal Medical Center, Asaba. The government has given a waiver. Of course, I have to bring to your notice that in the last two We apologize. That is all we can take from Asaba. The, and that's all on Nationwide. Thanks for joining us.